to 611 Films Podcast. I'm your host, David Groves, with my co-host, Neil McKay. Hey, we're in the building right now. Actually, we're in our own separate buildings, because we all have to be in separate places and separate buildings because of the virus and the pandemic and all this crazy but, shit but, that's going on. But you know, that doesn't change anything. We are still... It does not. We, we were always in separate buildings when we started. Yes, that's true. <laughs> that's true. I'm in, I'm, in, I mean, I'm in Burbank, California, and you are in Austin, Texas. And that is, sure. is, so this is the one thing we can do is podcast. That's true. It, it doesn't harm anybody. We're not going outside. We're you know doing that whole shelter and push our hands before the podcast. I, that's what I do. I hope so. You don't want to, I mean, you know, come on, let's be. Mm-hmm. Uh, no, I mean, you know, I'm not trying to make light of the situation. I mean, and you know, but we are. Uh, D- Dave and myself talk, and we're we're doing our part. You know, we. I, I mean, I've basically become a shut in for the last month almost. You know, so I've already been a shut in for like the last fucking <laughs> like, you know, five years. I, all I is, do is sit in my room and edit. Nothing has <laughs> like, changed. All I do, we just hide in our rooms and just go kind of like. So this thing goes down. And we're like, oh yeah, easy. Yeah, because <laughs> yeah, I mean, you've been stay editing, at home. but already doing yeah i i edit and yeah i'm like i'm used to this kind of thing this is yes and this is also like one of those funny things with like i I guess people like comedians have been making like this is the greatest thing for like 70 80 year olds they're like welcome to my world this is all i do sit around and walk my dog every every morning and in the evening that's pretty much it and and day drinking, which is pretty awesome. I just gotta say, so. pretty 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 <laughs> <Ew>. fun. <laughs> good. Um, well, if so you want to we... get get a good writing session in, you might as well start a little early, and then you'll feel very accomplished or not accomplished at all. Uh, yeah, that's by, yeah, like, that's how a lot of on. a lot of my day drinking sessions go. I'm like, damn it, I was supposed to do this, this, and this, and this, that, and the other. And it's like, you know, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, um, so what, so what are we talking about? We're talking about now and then, I mean, are we talking about, I think it was a hodgepodge. I think we had a hodgepodge of, of different stuff we wanted to talk about. Nothing's very specifically as far as like, uh, the industry or like right now the industry is shut down. Everything is going to next year or not happening. Um, but there are other issues. There are other things kind of going around, like, I think you had brought up to me, I guess, a couple months ago or something, like, you kind of had an idea of, like, the, you know, talking about the casting couch and Harvey Weinstein and all this stuff. So, I think we were going to, yeah, like, that, go that into is, that. Uh, okay, yeah, I didn't know we were, we were just going to kick it right off with that, but okay. Yeah. Might as well. <laughs> so, this is, so, so I this, mean, this has been a, a to me kind of uh, I mean it's it's a hot button topic for sure but it's it's been an annoyance for me um, you know just because and 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 let me say like I am not a supporter of Harvey Weinstein I'm I'm glad he, he got what he deserved and everything but this happening is like hey this is thirty years and like too late as far as I'm concerned I mean this guy was a scumbag from day one and it was tolerated. And the entire industry put up with this crap because this guy was powerful and he could get make you a star and he could get your movie in a place that maybe you could. And, and, and all of this stuff was tolerated. And then all of a sudden, in this day and age, you know, hey, with, with, with the technology and the media and everything, like you can't get away with things anymore. Like, I mean, you could look at like Bill Cosby got away with crap for 40 years or something. You can't do that anymore. Yeah. And and again, I'm not I'm not saying that what happened wasn't right or wasn't just or anything. I'm just saying it was like, it should have been a long time ago. Like this guy wasn't just a rapist. This guy was just an absolute dickhead. And, and he treated people like shit and he was notorious for it. And, and I was, I remember in the nineties hearing about this guy going like, why this guy's such a fucking asshole. Are you serious? And, but no, he was powerful and he had the casting couch and everything. And I mean, and that's another thing too. It's like, this is like a cliche joke, you know, the casting couch. It's like, it's, it's this thing like, Oh, oh you're a popular if, Hollywood. If, if, yeah. Let me, let me, let me just paint the picture just a little bit because I, I, if anybody's listening and they're a younger version of like Harvey Weinstein obviously started Miramax and all this stuff with his brother, um, back in the heyday of like the Sundance Film Festival. 
So basically, any kind of award-winning film, and he brought up so many great directors. I mean, Kevin Smith, Tarantino, Robert Rodriguez, Steven Soderbergh, like everyone started working for him. Maybe not working for him, but they were making movies that he would just pile on and take on for distribution. And there was, like, he was the clout. He was the clout. Like, everybody's doing clout shit these days on YouTube or TikTok or this, that, and the other, and show it off. He was the guy that was showing off and doing all these big, like, small budget movies, but taking them on for distribution, which I thought was interesting because, like, he ran pretty much all the award shows. English Patient, uh, Shine, um, well, he, he lobbied so well I mean, to get know. Shakespeare and Love to Win in 98, yeah. which was... Uh, he might have been the one that started the whole idea of like, hey, I'm just going to like send everyone screeners. I'm going to send them swag. Yeah. I'm going to buy a That, that was um, in, in 98, so Shakespeare and Love beat Saving Private Ryan, which was very like, whoa, um, at the time because... And I'm just going to go ahead and say it. Shakespeare in Love yeah. is a terrible movie. It's I don't even know why the hell it was not. I don't think I've never <laughs> seen it. I've never actually seen it. It's, I was so was, pissed off by the fact it, that Saving Private Ryan didn't win. I it, it, never it, watched it. It was an absolute clown show that it got nominated. Uh, Gwyneth Paltrow won an award for. I, I I don't even. I don't. I don't. I can't. I don't even understand anything about that whole thing. But what you're to your thing about how much clout he had how much power he had he lobbied so hard to get that thing i think he basically convinced the academy to to give that the the the, the oscar when it was so clear at the time like saving program yeah the movie like what are you doing <laughs> like, well i mean this guy's been around for the night and and it's funny too because i was telling my roommate johnny he might be a guest on the podcast at some point we might have and guys we might have guests pretty soon with our projects or other things and all this other stuff it's not just gonna be you know you and i talking we're we're kind of figuring that out that out right now but i do I would say that like the nineties was like literally the Harvey Weinstein era and the Jerry, it was the Jerry Bruckheimer and Weinstein era, you know, right. like Jerry Bruckheimer just came out with bad boys and, and, and big budget blockbuster movies. And Weinstein was less like, and I'm going to come out with, with Oscar winning low budget, cool, but still like very indie kind of films that was the interesting thing about him and he and but, he because of that had power because you didn't have to be you know a tom cruise or a meryl streep right yeah. you know you 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 could be you know kevin smith or quentin tarantino or uh you know whoever and um you know you come out of nowhere with that guy and because of that he even though he was kind of more for the little people so to speak he had that power and 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 essentially, people put up with his shit because, hey, this is a guy that can get you places. So he essentially raped women and was a douchebag to people because he could get away with it. And now we find out. I mean, I think the guy's got the coronavirus now too. So it's like, yeah. I mean, but the th and 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 what I was saying before though, I mean, like the cast and couch thing. I mean, it's like I don't know. I mean, I, I remember when we came up, we heard that a lot. I don't even know if it's a thing now, but it was kind of the unwritten rule of, or the un, it was this thing in, in old Hollywood where, hey, I have power. Um, you're an aspiring actress. I can get you that part in that movie, but you got to fuck me. And it's like, that's how it was back then. And it was accepted. And it was just this, you know, kind of thing. I'm not condoning it. I'm just saying that is what was going on. And now people are in, you know, such an outrage over like, you know, Harvey Weinstein. I am actually in an outrage over everybody that suffered that are that are long and dead and gone. But the people back in the 40s and 50s and 60s and before that, you know, they never got a voice. They never got to speak out against this because they basically were like, all right, I got to have sex with you to get this role in the movie. And, yeah. you know, and it, and it, and it's, and then when, you know, Harvey Weinstein and it's like, yes, fine. He got what he deserved and everything, but it's like, did you not know about this in the nineties? Like it was right there in front of you. Like, I, I don't know. So that's the whole thing that just pisses me off. Well, I think like, I think like I, I, it's a, it, 
I, I think, I don't know if, I'm not a psychologist. I'm, I'm not a psychiatrist. I'm not anything like that. I don't, I don't even say I am one on TV, but it, it's never been right. about like getting off or having sex with, it's control. It's always been about control. And I think that that's where Harvey Weinstein, I think that's what happened with Brian Singer, maybe with Kevin Spacey, maybe with uh, Bill Cott. Like it, it was, and, and, and to varying degrees or however you want to say it, it's like, I can control you. I can just do whatever I want. And that's like, it's that mentality that I think went through his head too. Yeah. I can do oh, I'm, this I mean, I'm, I I'm, just can and I mean, you, will, I, you will obey me. I mean, I'm with you on that. And it's, and it's, I'm, go, and, and let me be, I, I am glad what happened happened, but it, to me, it's like, like I'm, I'm kind of outraged about it. Cause it's like, why did it take this long for people to call out? And, and honestly, you know, we're calling out people like, Hey, you know, you fucked up, you're going to be held accountable but we're really not. There's so much crap going on in that industry and so many people that supported that guy and so many people that are doing things like him. And, you know, and it's like, if we're going to call a spade a spade, then we need, I mean, there's so much hypocrisy going on. I don't know. I'm just, well, it, and it wasn't even sexual. It wasn't even sexual. If anybody has not read or, or, or done the audio book, like uh, it's Kevin Smith's book. He did it like in 2004. 14, 15 or something. Um, he called his company when he wanted to branch off and do something. Uh, I don't remember exactly what, like Clerks 2 happened and that was still a Miramax or Weinstein company thing. Um, he, he went off to do like uh, Red State, I think. And yeah, that, that I remember He that. basically mm -hmm. says something in his audio book where he was like, and, and, and the company was going to be called the Harvey Boys. Because Kevin Smith still was like, oh, yeah, he brought me up. He got me my my big, mm. big thing with clerks and all this stuff and didn't care that, you know, uh, Mar Rats made nothing. And he then went on to do, like, Chasing Amy. But that made a couple bucks. And, and Ben Affleck was a part of that. And Ben Affleck was obviously a part of Harvey Weinstein's crew, too. Like, everything about it was like, oh. And then – there's a point in like the Sundance uh, world where Red State was going to happen. And he thought, oh, Harvey's going to pick this up. But then when they did the screening, it happened right at the Super Bowl. Like Sunday was the screening. And Harvey said, change your premiere date to Monday because I'm, I'm doing a Super Bowl party at Sundance. And Kevin Smith was like, are you joking me? you're more worried about the Super Bowl than my movie. And after mm. 15 years of working again, like, and he was like, the dude just completely ghosted me. Like he just left and he said, all right, if you're not going to bend to my whim, I'm not going to bend to yours. So, you know, and Kevin Smith was mortified. Like and he says it in his book, he's like this fucking asshole after all this time, said my Super Bowl party at Sundance is more important than your movie, which is why Sundance happens. Why the hell are you in Sundance to, if not to watch and pick up I mean, and distribute? I, I, I'm sympathetic to Kevin Smith, but it is kind of a, really? You're going to schedule your premiere on Super Bowl? It's kind of bad planning on anything. Well, it just kind of happened I mean. that <laughs> it was an earlier thing. I think it was just an earlier thing. And obviously, uh, Sundance always happens for two weeks, but it's it goes from like January into February, so it's like. Yeah. But, but that it, being said, so, it, so I'm just I'm just relaying what he said in his audiobook of like yeah. you know. But this on, this, guy. this guy this guy was uh, I mean that's an example of this guy being absolute bastard. I mean uh, this guy had a reputation for screaming at people in public. And when is that ever acceptable to just straight out in the middle of a whole bunch of people just start screaming at somebody for, for whatever, like you fucking idiot, blah, blah, blah. just out of nowhere. It's like, I, I, this is, this is really classy yeah, oh, yeah. behavior, Harvey, but you know, this is the kind of thing he would do. 
Uh, he was notorious for like stabbing people in the back. Uh, I mean, I think he had a, a nickname of Harvey Scissorhands because he would always take these guys, these 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 people like Kevin Smith and, oh, cuts, and, stuff. Yeah. and then he would, you know, recut the movie in his own way to make it more, you know, Hollywood. And it's like, and they'd be like, dude, you just ruined the movie. And um, actually, there was the guy that um, the guy that did Parasite had a story about that. Um, what, um, what's his name? That one, oh, the, Jun Ho. Yeah, he he had a story yeah. about dealing with Harvey uh, back 15 years ago or something, and uh, it was something. Yeah, where like Harvey wants him wanted to cut cut the movie, and he was basically like, "No, nah, I'm not. We're not doing that." Or I, and I'm walking from this distribution deal or something like that. I don't. I, I wish I. Now that we're talking about, it, I wish I. The but host. it was something. It was um, like I think I think, it was, I think that's what it was. Yes, it was the, the host. The yeah. host. I believe that's what it, it was. was a exactly. monster. It's kind of like a monster movie, like a. Um, yeah, and it was. It was actually was, a weirdly pandemically kind of charged <laughs> movie, but it was about coming, a monster in the sea. Yeah, it's all coming full circle. No, I I think you're absolutely right. Yeah, and it was something like that, and it was, um, and there, and I think. I ultimately like Harvey got his way at least with the American release and the movie maybe is not as good or did not do as well as it should have because you know his his vision was compromised um maybe it was I mean I don't know the the, the hey I think the host came out in like 2007 or 8 it was, or it was something it like was that, a part yeah. of a a a a movie a thing I do with my roommate where we watch like a lot of horror films in October for October Horror Fest, and uh, I think that was one of them. Like it was like two or three years ago, uh, we watched that, and it and I thought it was pretty good, but it did have kind of a ending where you were like, "Now I'm seeing it. Now I'm like going, oh yeah, yeah. I'm, that's probably why Harvey won. I'm, I'm pretty did, sure that because it, yeah. it ended like with a nice like it was a Hollywood ending. It was a very easy going like." the heroes win kind of thing. Yeah. I mean, not that, that he's even like about that game. Like, I, I don't know. It, it, it was very strange. I think he found this, himself like in weird, like worlds of, of indie film, like with Tarantino, with Kevin yeah. Smith, with, like these people just don't do Hollywood kind of dramas. Like, yeah, it's, 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 what, it's would have won it, an Oscar it, in seventies and eighties didn't but it, do it. But the the point, I mean, I mean, the, the whole thing with this is that the guy made a success of people that weren't Hollywood, and yet he's trying to make things Hollywood. And I'm just like, look, you're not, you're not a writer, you're not a director, you're not an editor, you're not, you you just do the business and just get the hell out of everyone's way. Like I can't stand these like studio execs who come in and like, no, we need to recut that and make it more popular to audiences. And it's like, just go away. You know nothing about the craft. You know nothing about what the audience wants. And I mean, that's a whole other conversation because it's like you got this, you know, revolving door of we get crap, we the audience, you and me, people that watch this stuff, we get bullshit and and we keep watching it because we're fed it. But, you know, and, and then the studios go, well, that's what they want. It's like, no, that's what we buy because that's what you give us. It's garbage. If all, I mean, we got to eat, you know, but if all you yeah, feed us is well, garbage, it's like. Well, yeah, <laughs> you know I, mean, I, mean, it's like, I mean, look, and that, that goes into a whole other topic and, 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 and movies and blockbusters and that in general. But to stay on like this idea of like, I guess the Me Too movement. I mean, we're really talking about the Me Too movement right now, mm -hmm. um, which has been talked about for quite a while. And what, what happened with Harvey Weinstein, what's been happening with other celebrities, like big celebrities, like Brian Singer with Kevin Spacey with all these people it's it it is a change of the guard in that way and i don't think harvey weinstein personally is any different from any of them they found money they found power and they said yep now i can do whatever yeah, the fuck i want i mean and this is true <clears throat> and you are correct it's probably more about control than it is sex or anything like that but the thing that really bothers me about Harvey Weinstein is that you and I can sit there and be like, hey, justice was done, the Me Too movement happened, this guy's sitting in jail, whatever. Mm -hmm. This guy, when he was given the verdict, actually said, I shit you not, to his lawyer, I don't understand what happened. I'm like, I'm innocent. I did nothing wrong. This guy thinks he didn't do anything wrong. This guy has been an absolute scumbag his entire life, yelling at people, screaming at them, you know, 
backstabbing people, raping women. And, and all of a sudden it's like, I, I don't know what it, it's like, are you serious? I don't know. Are you kidding dude, me? I, How dude, is that possible? I, yeah. I, I, I don't know if, so here's the deal guys. Um, if you haven't seen it, Psycho and Associates is on Amazon. It's actually free on prime. If you want to watch it. Um, I, I wrote an entire movie now it's all fiction i didn't do a deep dive into fucking like actual psychopathy or you know sociopathic tendencies i know a lot about it but i do think that it's not born and bred in you sometimes it is something that you can just get and i truly believe that when you are king of the world when you are winning oscars when you have massive amounts of money when you have 50 people working for you when this all happens, there is a level in your head. This is why child actors always get like, you know, the brunt of terrible shit. Like, and they, and sad to say, yeah, like, I, either commit suicide or have a drug problem. Or do, when you give someone this much power and this much money, and they literally think they're God, that's when they go, what you just said. He goes to his lawyer and goes, what? Wait, I didn't do anything wrong. Are you kidding me? It's No, it, you go, it, you're going to jail. Like, your, your brain is fried with this. And it's been fried for I, 25 years. And I don't know. I mean, maybe. I, 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 that, that is plausible, Dave. And I make, that makes a lot of sense. But it's just, it's just so hard for me to, like, I just, I don't get it, you know? And, and when you have Ricky Gervais saying at the, the Golden Globes, you know, um, everybody take your award, you know, shut the fuck up and walk off stage and, and say your thank yous and, you know, you're done. And they go up and they go on their pedestal and they say, you know, oh, blah, 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 I'm going to talk about this. I'm going to talk about this. And it's like, I don't think that they realize, you know, Harvey Weinstein didn't think he did anything wrong. These, these celebrities that, you know, get on their soapbox, they think, like they just they just don't have like a concept of what like the rest of the world who who isn't in their mansions making millions of dollars is dealing with and it's well that it's that like, brings us to another topic which was we're all over the I, place I tonight we to, we're, we're, no but i think it is kind of interesting that you just said that because it does like it it, it goes into the gal godot uh imagine song with portman and exactly and exactly and, <laughs> and they're like you know let's just sing this song and how does this song begin imagine there's no heaven uh gee what the great song great song uh why are you but singing it's, this and, right and, now? and they're talking about imagine there's no borders and we're all together yeah. and stuff and it's like i i think we're supposed to be social distancing right now so this doesn't really make a lot of sense to be singing a song like that when we were pretty sure to be what we need together. to do is yeah we all it's, should just be but, and as they are zooming and or skyping or however they did that thing it was just like but it's, it's, I, I don't know. That, I that found awareness. it very, very cringeworthy. A lot of people, some people were like, ah, I kind of respect what they were going for. But I, a lot of people agree with me and say it's cringeworthy because it's just like, why, why did you find this necessary? Like, is this just like a, hey, look at me, give me attention. I'm trying to do something nice. Like, I, I don't, I don't get it. I don't. I, I, I actually, I would actually be on the other side of that. And I will say, I do not think that. Gal Gadot had bad intentions. Obviously, she thought it was going to be a good idea. And it backlashed way harder than it was. And I think it's because of the song choice and the beat. Like, it's a big Beatles. Like, why do that? Like, you know, Somewhere Over the Rainbow might have been a better song. Technically, it was, it, was, it was John Lennon solo. Yeah, well. I, mean, I don't want to split hairs ever, but no. it was, you know, it wasn't Beatles. But let's just say it was. They, they it were very much broken up by <laughs> It could have been any song, though, right? Like, I mean, what song is going to... And I think the thing was, too, it, it, it is, again, it's the power, it's the money. It's like, oh, cool, you all, you all healed us by singing that. Now, here's the deal. Now we've got Stephen Colbert and Conan O'Brien and, and, and John, all, and every person is doing their comedy bits and everything from home and doing all that stuff. Okay, that 
and we're trying to find levity in a situation that's terrible. It was not ill-intentioned with that, I don't think. It just went off with a, mm, 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 mm. no, stop it. Like, nobody cared for it. Yeah. Which is yeah. funny, too, because guess what? Like, Justice League, DC, uh, Batman v Sir, Wonder Woman did pretty well. Gal Gadot is, like, pretty popular. And it, it just, yeah. it just I mean, didn't hit. It just listen, didn't hit. I, it, it, yes, it was it was a swing and a miss. Uh, I, I agree with you. I don't think any of the people in that thing had ill intentions. But I don't think that's a cancel culture issue either. But, no, but I mean, like, I think it was it's just, it's just an out of touch like, kind of... Ugh. I think it's yeah. one of those things if, if, if Gal Gadot or any of these people were like, you know, on our level and they're, you know, working, you know, jobs and, the, you know, the, and this CV Look, thing if affects she had them. Put, let's say she had put something to the effect of like, I'm doing this with all these celebrities. And by the way, here's a feedamerica.org or, uh, you know, a Red Cross or, you know, any something like that. And yeah. I've just given you know and that's also going to be slammed like oh now she needs a brag that she gave two hundred thousand dollars or a million dollars to someone listen if you're trying like everywhere you work right now this 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 entire country this entire world is cancel culture and that's the problem that's why i don't find this thing to be that big of a fucking deal because it isn't who gives a shit no it's now yes they could give money and they probably are no, it's it, listen. Like if people are gonna get all you know hot and bothered about you know if she did something like that, like you said, and then there was like a link, so hey, donate da 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 da, and it was like for a common good or something, and then people are gonna bash that, like mm, you know, fuck them, you know, whatever. The cancel culture. People are gonna say what they're gonna say. If you have a good intention, I just don't understand the intention because it was simply like, hey, we're gonna get a bunch of people together and we're gonna sing a song, and it's like, what are you doing? Like, I don't, I don't get it. I mean, you talk about like Stephen Colbert or something like that. They're Hey, I'm still, we still have to entertain people. People are like doing nothing right now and we need to give them content. So they're doing their thing. Um, you know, I respect that. It's like, I mean, I don't know. I mean, I guess there's like a fine line you cross, but to me, there's just that difference of like, Hey, I'm trying to do something for you that would normally be done. And then there's like, okay, what? And I just felt like, yeah, that imagine thing was like, well, why? And I think I think you're no, right. Like, I think it would, if there was like, that was give to like charity why. thing, it would be so much better. It would be like, oh, okay, that makes sense. Oh yeah, cool. yeah. But if it's they like done it that way. Yeah, that would have like lessened the blow because it was. It, the, here's the reason why it was actually terrible because like nobody could say they didn't actually bring in like, you know, Lady Gaga. They didn't bring in like Usher. They didn't have Justin Timberlake singing of the song either it was just a bunch of movie celebrities that can't sing worth a damn yeah and that was pretty terrible to and, start with but and i think that 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 whole thing too again this is what i'm saying is like the cancel culture the 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 uproar about this type of thing of like oh people are dying and then you guys like just in your mansions are singing the song it's like calm down a little bit just ease up i'm not saying what they did was good i'm just also not saying it was that bad like it it doesn't matter in the in in actuality it has no bearing on what's happening well i mean i see what you're saying and 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 yes for every you know over here on this side you're gonna have somebody who just instinctively is gonna say go fuck yourself well, you know I mean, what I mean? Yeah, everybody, like, I everyone's going to have their opinion. You know, I sure. could say I support so-and-so, and then no matter what, you're going to have that person who doesn't even know anything about anything, and they're just going to be like, well, fuck that person. And like, <laughs> seriously? Well, you know, you it's the troll no. culture now. It's like the cancel culture. Is, everybody it's, wants it to is troll. It is cancel, it's troll. It, yeah. Everybody wants to. There are people to, that just want to fucking bring things down and just do that. They that just want to watch the anyway. world burn, you know? And it's like, I mean. And, and, um, and, and what's funny too, again, it's like, okay, let's take the that example and look at like, I don't know if you saw it today or yesterday. I, I guess it came out yesterday and now is a big thing. Like Tom Holland and... Uh, he's doing a handstand on his apartment, like put a shirt on while doing a handstand. And he sent it to Ryan Reynolds and Jake Gyllenhaal. And Jake Gyllenhaal did it. And Ryan Reynolds kept looking at the camera, watching Tom Holland do this thing. And he was like, 
no, <laughs> like not doing that. And it was hilarious. And his, his expression, everything about it was just funny. I did not now, now I have to Google this because I am not aware. <laughs> I'm not aware of this, but this yeah. sounds hilarious. Yeah. So. yeah. Yeah. And it was um, like, the, what, like, what do I do? Just Tom Holland like, does a handstand and Tom Holland handstand t-shirt. And yeah, it, it, it comes right up. I'm sure. Uh, oh yeah. There's yeah. There's Ron. <laughs> yeah. Okay. All right. Well, I'm not gonna watch it right this. Well, actually maybe I could, I'll go on mute. You talk for a second. No, just watch it. Yeah. It's, it's quick. Yeah. It's quick. It's quick. I mean, I'll, I'll just explain to the viewers. If you haven't seen it, you, 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 you have to have seen it because obviously it's bigger than our podcast. So you've seen it guys. And the funny thing, it's putting a, on a t-shirt while doing a, a handstand against the wall, which is pretty difficult for most people. And Tom Holland's in pretty good shape from Avengers and doing Spider-Man. And then he gave it to Jake Gyllenhaal and was like, this is like a challenge thing. And then it goes to Ryan Reynolds. And it was hilarious what Ryan Reynolds does while watching Jake and Tom doing it. If you see it in a three screen and he looks at it and watches them do it and goes, no, I don't want to do that. <laughs> he doesn't say, I don't want to do that. He just says, no, and it's hilarious. So I'm, I'm about took me a second to get it on. I'm actually, I'm surprised at how ripped Tom Holland is. Uh, oh, yeah. Well, I mean, he's young. And I mean, Jake Gyllenhaal is not surprised. He's been oh, fed I, the Marvel. This the is Marvel total garbage. Money. They didn't do the Ryan Reynolds reaction. Oh, my God. This is, this is what you get with. <laughs> I Like, I mean, oh, whoops. Oh, mute that. Yeah, keep it going. It's all right. <laughs> Don't get copyrighted. Don't get copyrighted. I think this is like Justin Bieber, like reacting to it. Listen, I'll, I'll watch it at some point. But yeah, I saw that. I didn't I see. I mean, Ryan literally Reynolds. all Ryan Reynolds does is for 12 seconds, watches Tom Holland and Jake Gyllenhaal do it. It's, and then he goes. I mean, no. it, it is actually pretty yeah. impressive with Tom Holland. I'm actually surprised because he's kind of, uh, you know, he plays himself. You know, he's a Tobey Maguire, Spider-Man, you know, Peter Parker kind of. And I'm like, dude, that guy's shredded, man. Like. Good for him. Oh yeah. Like, geez, yeah. I mean, you know. hey, you gotta you gotta be <laughs> okay. that way. Like, hey, you get millions of dollars from Marvel, you better be you better, you better you know, and I bet watch you, those donut intakes. I bet it's, you I think you know and then this is another thing where it's like, hey, you know, here's here's you and then here's me, you know, that kind of thing with, with the Hollywood stuff. When you have you're on a private chef cooking you, you know, Wolfgang Puck meals that are no calories and taste delicious i'm sure it's pretty easy to you know say this that and the other and then us schlubs over here like you know buying you know hamburgers at, at the grocery market like, <laughs> that was actually a can of a corn and everything happened. it's like oh yeah no that that that's actually a thing i think that um that's how like the celebrity culture or like fitness celebrity culture was born with youtube or with like other people because it was chris pratt that really did something where they were in all right what the are you kidding six like that six months no beer t-shirt off ripped as fuck like he was like that picture kumail nanjani did it like obviously a month month and a half ago but that chris pratt one was rippling through the internet. That was just crazy. Yeah, he had a, uh, a he schlubby had a... Parks and Rec guy that was kind of cute and good looking in Everwood, a WB show that happened in like early 2000s. Now he was like Andy from Parks and Rec, and he's just like really he, he, not he did very. A, he did have a, he had a gut. A, he, he had did a, have a crazy gun. transition. Now, I uh, now you know me, but like that I, transition right there to get to Star Lord to get into that shape. To, that's and all that's, he does is like I didn't fucking drink beer. Like oh right, and you didn't have like oh, other no, that's, people that, like that, giving that's, you that's, massive amounts of like training, and you eat at this time and then at this time, and you don't eat a damn thing after that. Not even a kernel of rice ever. Yeah, there's no I'm way you sure. can get that shredded without. Um, you know, some sort Probably of, uh, you know, too. weightlifting. Well, I mean, so you know me now. I did uh, a thing, and I can attest to this. I mean, if you, 
diet alone, like I basically didn't do exercise for three months, but I did this one diet and it was like a, yeah. you know, a oh, drop, yeah, that's drop right. weight that's quick when you got, thing. When you uh, look like emaciated almost. <laughs> well, I mean, hey, I, I did, did. you did. I uh, remember I, Somebody that. else said that too. I was, like, I was oh, like, wow, I yeah. didn't realize I was, yeah, because I ended, so I was, um, I used to be 255 pounds and then I did this diet and I got down to like 193 or something like that. So it was over 60 pounds that I lost. And I think that was like yeah. the, the the point where you were saying, and somebody else said that too, that I look emaciated because, you know, and I'm six feet tall and I don't, I have a problem with that whole thing of like, oh, well, you're supposed to weigh this if you're, you know, because I'm just like a big bone guy. So it's like, I think I do look a little funny. If I, if I was to be 180 pounds, I would look sickly, I think. Um, so I look like a little bit more normal at 200, but um, anyway, but I did this whole thing. I mean, I definitely didn't look good at 255 and I did this like, uh, you know, drop pounds quick diet but it was, yeah. it was, um, I mean, and the science is there. It's every, every, all these like crazy, you know, diets that, that you hear. It's all about no carbs, no sugar, no alcohol, no nothing. And I mean, I did that for three months and right. it works yeah. if you, and it was strict as shit. And I was, um, it yeah. was not fun. And I mean, I'm sitting there going like, yeah. I'm so tired of eating broccoli. And it was like, I, that, that was mm -hmm. like, the, the, that was my life for like three months. And, um, but I really didn't do, you know, the exercise part. So it's like, yeah, you can't. And I mean, so, I mean, yeah. Cause you can't, weight. you can, you don't have anything. Yeah. You don't have any ex energy. Cause you're so weak. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you're just all the carbs. Cause you're, you're so hungry. Like, and so <laughs> tired. <laughs> you can't even think of an exercise. Yeah, exactly. I was hungry. Well, you kind of get used to it after a week, but you are just hungry all the time. And it's, just, oh, this is terrible. But I mean, I mean that whatever these people do, these Hollywood people to get in shape like that, it works. I mean, look at Christian Bale. I mean, that's insane. I mean, the guy gains weight, loses oh, weight, yeah. gets shredded. All of a sudden, he's emaciated, like in the Machinist. It's like, what? I mean, and gain like f fifty-five, he, seventy pounds for did, being in Batman Begins. Yeah, he like, did the, right the Machinist, and he was like, "Oh my God, you're gonna die. You look terrible." And then, you know, a few months later, he's like, he looks like. A professional wrestler doing in Batman Begins. It's like, yeah. <laughs> what is happening? It's it, it, well, that guy's and just again, a monster, that man. is also, but that is again, like we said with Chris Pratt, like that's like I'm gonna get this goddamn role because I'm good at like I can do it, and I used to be skinny, and then I became a schlub for Parks and Rec, and now, uh, you're gonna give me. Uh, two million dollars to play Star Lord, and I'll get a personal chef and a trainer, and I just can't drink beer for six months. Yeah, it sucks, but you know, I get this, <laughs> so, yeah. and I become a movie star. I'm like, all right, might as well. Yeah, or I, mean, I think obviously. Well, now I mean, was did he say just beer? I mean, was he able to drink like vodka and stuff, or just like no? Beer? I'm just making a funny joke about like his meme or his uh the photo that photo of him in the gym if you go back to look it up like his old photo of uh right before guardians of the galaxy oh, I think started, I know it, it, it was, like it was literally right? the photo of his yeah well i mean it wasn't it was just his photo and he just said no beer six months and it was like well you've definitely done more so that's than it, that's it, that's not it. having beer in your system <laughs> you pumped you've had a you, um, you've definitely been in that gym for quite a bit of days it, 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 and it, was, it is true you can do quick quick cuts like that it but was he uh, was you, he you was, and i are are, are, are fans of, of beer uh we know this we hmm. know each other so it's, it's clearly yes. now i did i did not drink i had one cheat where i took a sip of beer during that three month diet thing um, but I didn't yeah. drink beer and I had a couple, I went to a, a friend's wedding and I drank, uh, vodka and soda, which is like the, I, I would say it's the best thing you could do, but it's the best thing you could do. If you, if you're gonna drink, it's the, it's yeah. the low, it's, it's, it's the least damage to your body or whatever, as far no as like, if you're like, yeah, right. Like and sugar and carbs and yeah, it's, right. it's, it's bad, but it's not as bad as like drinking wine or bourbon or beer or whatever. And uh, so I was at this wedding and I'm, you know, I'm, all right, I'm cheating and I'm drinking the, you know, the vodka soda or whatever. And then the, the, a friend of mine is next to me and he, he's got a beer and, and I haven't had a, a, a sip of beer in like two months. And I take a sip of beer and I swear to God, it was like, 
That is the greatest beer I've ever had in my life. It's probably like a Miller Light, and it was fucking <laughs> nat- <laughs> natty. I was about to say it was like natty light, and it was just like I because that was the thing. I love beer so much. I was like, that was the greatest thing I ever had in my life, and it's the swill crap. When it touches your lips, it's so <laughs> and good. it's like Will Ferrell, right? It's like it's just yeah. like yo. Oh. It's like, but we're going hey, streaking now. I had a I, shot of beer. Oh, Let's man. go streaking. Yeah, it's no, um, dude. You got you got fucking small. Like again, it wasn't like a a, a thing. Like I, I didn't know. Like you and Joe did that whole thing together too. And when I came by, Joe's I a friend of mine like from a, back east. Uh, just yeah, the context. So for reference, for reference, and I saw him too, and I was like, he was always a more bulky, wide shouldered kind of like he's, 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 he's like built like me. He's, got, he's, he's like got, your height. Like, yeah, yeah he's, but like, he, he's, he's not, another guy that he couldn't get under 200 because he's just big bone and it's not you know you hear that and you go but it's like he looked he looked weird at 205 or whatever he got yeah, down to. i saw him too like yeah, and it was, was like, like you don't need to be that thin man um but that's the thing i mean i think <laughs> when they when they say oh you're you know five uh, seven or you're six three you're supposed to weigh this amount of weight that's all i think that's all horseshit um uh, especially when they do, do that with women with and stuff it's like composition yeah it's like i mean if if you're if you're like uh you know a girl with curves and stuff like that and you're just listening to some shit like some model says like they weigh 100 pounds at five foot something and you're like bullshit like if you look good you look good i mean that's you know, you'll know when you look good when you look at yourself in the mirror and you're happy with it you know what i mean that's Right. Yeah. For sure. I, the, the, the hell with everyone else and all. Well, that. I mean, with every with every actor, with every like, I mean, again, we, we're on this idea and this track of 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 talking about like how they do all this stuff, and it's because again, they have chefs, they have personal trainers, yeah, they have massive amounts of money they're going to get paid to do all this stuff, and it's it's just like, whoa, okay, like everyone can do like if you want to be Christian Bale from The Machinist, here's what you do: you don't fucking eat at all. You drink a lot the, of water um, and eat like two things of tuna. What, yeah, what was the thing? Did. He ate a can of tuna fish and an apple every day. That was all he ate, right? Yeah, and water, like, right? I think that, that was, was like the that only was like thing. I I don't know yeah. if it's a true it? or not. That was the rumor I heard about his diet for The Machinist, which is insane. It's insane. Can you, could, and, Cause I was actually thinking about when I did that diet. Uh, I was like, Oh, there's no way I could do that. And I was, and I was cutting off <laughs> yeah. like a lot of food and going really low calorie carbs and everything. And I was like, there's no way just one apple and a can of tuna fish. I'd, I'd, <laughs> I'd jump off the building. <laughs> I'd lose my damn life. Oh my God. There's no way. Like, I mean, <laughs> even just no car, even if you did like an intermittent fasting thing and then with no carbs, like it's, it's rough. Like you, you really have to train your mind. You have to train this idea of like, because I think you told me when you were starting to do that, you were just like, yeah, for the first two weeks, I felt like shit. And three weeks in, like terrible, terrible. It's, yeah. But you kept I've, it going. And you, once you do it, once you start that whole thing, you kind of go, it's, it's, all right, it, body's adapting to it all. It, like it's, keto. It's, it's like it, it was a keto kind of style diet. Yeah, it, 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 I got used to it. I, it you're right. I, I felt sick. I felt like I had the flu the first week I had it. And then uh, the first week I had it, the first week I was on the book, I had the coronavirus. It's, like, it's, just, it's just going into my head. Like it's like I can't stop. Yeah, you want to lose weight? Get the coronavirus, Get it. Oh and my God. then you'll lose massive pounds. Like, sorry, Jesus. sorry, sorry, sorry. Yeah, kidding, kidding, people. Yeah. Kidding. Too soon. Too people. soon. <laughs> it's like too I don't soon. know. It's, we're losing our minds. We've been cooped up inside so much. It's like, um, but so, but yes. I mean, like I felt. You know, the first week I did it. Um, you know, I felt sick. Um, and but I I think that anything you do like. There's that adaptability period. Um, you and I yeah. uh, used to smoke cigarettes and stuff, and I quit smoking, and yeah. you know that sucks, you know. But then you get used to it, and then you move on, and it's it's just like anything else. It's like you want to do something. Oh God, I got to do this, and then you know. But once you adjust to it, then it kind of. And the longer you go, it. You yeah, know, it's it's sure. fine, and then you, and then you it starts it. to get a little easier and easier and easier. A little, a little easier it's, it's now, and terrible. I mean, and and I sell this diet out as like it was hard. It was hard for those first two weeks, but once I got used to it, actually, it wasn't that bad. You know, mm-hmm. I mean, 
uh, you get used to it. You're like, okay, that's all I'm doing. I'm eating lettuce for but lunch. But wouldn't you this- say like right now, like if you, but if you were to do it, like you wouldn't do it all over again, uh, unless Marvel or DC was going to pay you massive amounts of money to like actually be in one of their shows or movies or whatever it's going to be. I, I, I don't know. I, I've always just, uh, just do balance taking less calories than you burn and like that's how you do it and as normal people everyone wants well, a quick it, fix it, it's, it's you know funny. everybody it's wants that quick fix it's funny that you ask that question because i you know because i look at and i think and you and i have talked about this kind of in the same vein you know before but we're both filmmakers right so we and, and we've talked about like you, you once had the acting bug and I've done acting and stuff. Cause I think it strengthens yeah. your connections to when you talk to actors and things like that. So you have to sure. know your space and, 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 and what is going on on the camera. You have to experience it yourself. That's a whole other thing, but I'm sure we'll get into other podcasts, but you and I we always like we're filmmakers. Like we're yeah. not really interested in being in front of the camera. We want to, you know, kind of be the marionette puppeteers of, of the whole process uh, maybe i don't know maybe this is where control freaks or something going back to the other thing i don't know but there's a different kind of like the the stuff that christian bale does you know what these actors do to get the, like i i couldn't do that like i mean i, I mean I, i'm not saying i couldn't do it but to, to, the, the the extents that people will go to transform like that's a, that's a mentality that i'm like i would love to have yeah, in front of probably. me as a director for sure but it's it's you know what I mean like I like that's a whole special beast that I just like I can't touch that you know what I mean like that's their thing and I'm like wow that's impressive but like goddamn I can't I can't get in the headspace well, you know, I mean do you know I, what I mean I, like dude I do know what you mean but I do think like again if you were a performer if you were like someone like that or someone you know from acting from projects we've done and knowing that people literally live and breathe by being on camera, literally have to make their living by being on camera, hence Chris Pratt, hence Christian Bale, hence even George, like Siriano with George Clooney, where he had to like gain like 70 pounds, have a big ass gut. Like when you are doing that kind of thing, and then you also have a massive amount of money and you want that clout, you want that Oscar, you want to do a project that's really cool and really like, oh, that's the only thing in your brain. And it goes back to Harvey Weinstein a little bit, not his sexual piece of shitness, but it is this idea of I want to control what I can, I, if I did this, oh, and the project's great. I might get a sack. Jared Leto did uh, something uh, right after something. I don't know. It was fight. He did like he was playing John Wayne Gacy. He was like a, the oh, serial killer. I know. I know what you're talking about. Uh, it was yeah, with he, Lindsay Lohan, no, 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 I think. Oh wait a minute. Oh no, you're yeah. not, you're not talking about the one that killed John Lennon. Speaking of no, imagine. no, he was um, like uh, the serial killer. I think in something. It was like in. It was a while ago. I don't. I don't remember exactly. But no. But you're. But you're not talking about the one where he gained fought, a bunch of he, weight because that was the tons of weight. That was the. Um, oh, that was that right? That was the one that he played Chapman that killed um, Lennon, John Lennon. Maybe. Right? Yeah. Maybe? I, I don't know. I never watched it. I just remember. I know what you're talking like, about though. You're, how the uh, hell did Jared Leto, a guy that's a stick figure in every, like his metabolism is so goddamn high? How did he even? get that big and he did he was able to make it happen because he thought the project was really really you good know, interesting side note uh i have a co-worker that went to uh grade school with jared leto she showed oh. me a, she showed me a yearbook picture of him like it was like fourth grade or something and coincidentally enough she is an alma mater of george mason like you and i are Oh well, there it you is. Go. Well, it rock is rock and roll. George it is, Mason it is, and Jared I, Leto's it, elementary school. It's like <laughs> I just find this funny, like how everything's coming full circle. It's like, oh, and then blah 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 blah, and it's like, oh my god, how we didn't plan this, folks. We didn't but just... <laughs> yeah, no, no, not at all. Because again, I just remember now, like I mean, uh, uh, I don't think Christian Bale has always been a 
fluctuation of anything he wants to do. I don't know. That guy is a machine. He can do that kind of thing. Most people can't. Like if you look at Chris Pratt right now, it's always going to be kind of a middling ground of like, he's not like the fat guy from Parks and Rec, but he's also not really the ripped up dude that he showed in his photo. He's now middling that whole thing out because he just can't sustain it. Like Zach yeah. Efron, I just watched on Hot Ones. Like he was doing the wing challenge with uh, the the dude that does the wing things yeah, on the, YouTube. Yeah. And, and he looks a little puffy. He's a little puffy mm. in this. It, he's not jacked, crazy Zach Efron. He's got a little like in his in his cheeks. Like you're like, all right, what? Uh, you, you, you could you could, you could you ever do that? The Hot Ones challenge that they do? Yeah, I could. Yeah. I mean, Zach Efron actually went like balls hard. I just watched it uh, yesterday, and and he, he did he get through take it? Anything. He didn't take any drinks. He didn't take any milk. Oh, he was he didn't uh, do water. He didn't do anything. You know, I heard did that too. Uh, like super, like baller, like goddamn was Halle Berry. Like I think she went through the whole thing without any of that shit. Like no milk, no water, no. And then like at the end, like you know, you can eat that hot ass wing yeah. and you can like double down on it and she was like yeah no whatever well, like, what, <laughs> like, what's 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 interesting too is like uh i think sean is doing um and sean is the, the i not that i know him but he's like he's bringing in and this is such great business such a great business because he's like now i'm gonna put it on a tbs show now i'm gonna do my youtube and then i'm gonna do all these other things like his streams of him come wildly ridiculous but what he's doing now is like there was one hot sauce i actually bought his chipotle hot sauce from hot ones like four years ago which was like oh i I, because i've been watching the show for forever Uh and i was like i love hot sauce i love hot sauce and then I bought this thing. The funny thing is the hot sauce was like $7.99 to buy as a bottle. But then it was like $10.99 to like ship to me from Arizona to here. And I was like, I'm never doing that. And I, I, I've seen it that. It was good, but it was like, eh. I've, I've seen know. it because I, I, I recently did that. Like I, I was like looking up stuff. But what could I get from Amazon? And with the shipping and stuff, you're basically paying like $20 for a bottle. Yeah, a it's bottle like a lot sauce. more. Like, and I was like, on, eh. Yeah, so here's another thing that I wanted to ask you, which was like, because I think you brought it up to me, and again, it kind of goes into the whole pandemic and this, that, and the other, and Gal Gadot's thing, and all this other stuff, but then Vanessa Hudgens does this, like, weird oh, yeah. kind of, hey, you know, people might die, but come on, guys, like, what's the big deal? <laughs> like, yeah, whoa. she. Um, oh, whoa. Yeah, no, I mean exactly, and I, I, I almost feel like in this and now what we're going through with the coronavirus thing, it's like every day there's something new. So, I'm, I think she's lucked out that it's not like it's just it's just it's done and gone. <laughs> like she hit her backlash, and the people have moved on because there's so much other crazy shit going on. But when you do something like that, and again, this is and this this all goes back to like Harvey Weinstein and. Bill Cosby and all this other stuff. This is a day and age where you can't do a thing without, you know, ha- the repercussions coming back. You you can't get away with anything anymore. Like you just you just can't can't get away with murder. Yeah. You can't get away with saying something about somebody. It just, it's everything. You just have to assume that when you walk out your door and, and, and to public, like everything is being recorded. Like that's the world we live in now, and people did. Well, not she was recording there. herself. So, I mean, she was she, literally on she, her like and that's what Snapchat so, or Instagram and, and stories. That's what's so about this, this stuff. is if she said it like if she was in a heated, you know, argument with somebody at a bar or something like this. I mean, but when she's record, like that's what you're saying. She recorded herself. It's like I don't, how, how are you not that like aware? And she even says at the end of the little thing in question. Yeah, she says I probably like, shouldn't be doing this, and it's like. Seriously, like, just get the hell off the damn. But this brings it like so you, know, you and I. <laughs> yeah. Speaking of which, if we're doing this podcast thing, I, so so my thing with her is that it's 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 being unaware of like what you say and and not having accountability and then because she she did this and then uh, 
she used this like, oh, it, it was taken a context card. Everyone loves to use that, but they don't know what that means. If I, if let's say I was uh, talking about Hitler or something like that, and I used a phrase that he said, and maybe I was like really trying to hammer it home and I was doing it in kind of a mocking way. And I was like, what if I was like Hitler and I did this? And you took only that part and you're like, well, Neil McKay said this, which Hitler said. I'm like, well, you're taking it out of context because I was clearly doing like an anti-Hitler thing and I was making fun of him and, you know, that's out of context, mm -hmm. yeah. right? Yeah. But if I just say like, oh, well, you know, some people are going to die from this thing, big deal. And then, oh, whoops, sorry, that was taken out of context. What do you mean it was taken out of context? It was not taken out of context. You don't know what that means. Like, you just said it. Like, no, so, it, it, it definitely it definitely wasn't taken. Yeah, exactly. And that's the whole thing. You just thing. didn't take like, accountability for what she said. And that's the problem. Like, just no, be like, hey, I is, fucked up. I'm sorry. And that was dude, it. Move on. You're fucking on the money with that. And that's the problem with celebrity culture, too, where they don't want to get they don't want to get canceled. But they also don't want to, like, just say, yep, sorry. Yeah, I said something kind of stupid. But sorry. See, people, ah, fuck. You know, people it was just right like, through that. Now, shit. let me kind of, like, reveal, like, something else. Now, here's here's the deal. And this, again, is what I'm going to say. And it's the same thing with Gal Gadot and Imagine and all this other stuff. Like, when I hear, when I watch the video of uh, Vanessa Hudgens doing that shit, I was like, well, what's the backstory here? And it's sort of like, oh, Coachella's gotten, like, nixed. And, oh, this fashion show that I was going to go to. And that's the worst part about it. It's sort of this thing of, like, all these events that I wanted to go to now are canceled and I don't really care for that. And people might die. Like that's the worst about her. It was just like, you're, you're just not even getting it. Cause it's all about you. And it's about wanting to go to Coachella and going to, you know, a fashion Paris fashion week or something. I don't know. That's what they were like. Like I guess all the news outlets were saying, like that's why she. Was I, I did see stuff like, coming out after that. Like they, they were like, "This woman's thirty-one years old, not 16 Or <laughs> yeah, like, <laughs> like a joke. Like, I need oh, to like, go to Coachella oh. at thirty-one. Like, um, yeah. Uh, well, it's come on. Um, like, I know a lot of fifty-year-olds go to Coachella, but then there's also a lot of fucking. I mean, hear, hearing the backstory like makes that it kind of stuff. Like, hearing the backstory like that makes it a little more cringeworthy, but. I mean, at the, at the end of the day, if you're sitting no, there it's saying... it's wildly more cringeworthy. Because if she didn't understand that, if she didn't really get it, I would understand. Like, she doesn't understand as a celebrity with millions of dollars that's living in her Beverly Hills mansion. If she didn't get it, that's when I'd go, okay, well, she doesn't understand. But then all this backlash of like, oh, all these festivals are getting done and oh, uh, there's no fashion week for this. And that was the problem that I had with it where I was like, oh, cause you can't go to these events where they probably pay you millions of dollars and you wear a piece of clothing and all this other stuff. Like, oh, come on, what are you doing? Yeah. I mean, uh, yeah, it's, it's. I didn't want to. I didn't want to like wreck any kind of idea of that. But at the same time, it was just such a. It seemed nonsensical, no, no matter what. But at the same time, if it was just done for this idea of like, I'm just kind of a celebrity that doesn't get it. All right, I give it to you. All right, yeah, you don't get it. Like, yeah, I don't get it. But it was really about all the. <laughs> like event she was like ready to go to that got canceled and now she's like yeah people might die but you know isn't that how it goes <laughs> like what the fuck are you talking yeah. about i mean again yeah you you give some backstory to that and it is kind of like wow really you know but i i just think it's kind of funny like at the end of the thing she's you know before she cuts off the the video she's like ah it's probably a bad idea yeah you think um and I think so. Somebody, but she like, still uploaded it too. I mean, I don't know if that was a story, and and it it literally it. I've never done an Instagram story, so I don't know what that is. I, I barely know anything about Instagram or Snapchat. I, I've never been on Snapchat. I I don't know much about anything. But it's but like, right. is that like something like you just click off like as a 
record button and then hit unrecord and then it all it, I don't think I think automatically um, uploads. I know what you're talking about. You're talking about that app. Uh, is it Snatch Cam or Snatch Chat or uh, not not Snapchat, uh, but it would be like uh, a But like it is that thing that's like oh story, like it, I'm pretty sure whatever she did. I have no idea. That that was on there and it was on there and she I, I mean, I don't know. Maybe she did that to get attention. I don't, you know, this is the thing. Maybe people, if I start saying shit like, you know, oh, I hate so-and-so, you know, to get attention and I throw that shit up on, you know, social media and then people are like, well, fuck this guy. He said, you know, I'm like, but I'm just doing it for views or, I mean, that's the thing. It could be a thing. I don't think she was doing it for views. I mean, again, man, Maybe she, I, think I, I she's honestly believe like I Gal believe. Gadot and 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 Vanessa. Hutt. I, I it, it, yeah, I think it's clueless. It's not. So here, no here, here's, here's my right. thing, and I just and I mean, I kind of want to make my. I, I, and this will go back to Harvey Weinstein, and I, I want to bring up the uh, the Houston Astros. I know you're not like a baseball fan necessarily, but I am, and uh, you know, for anybody who's not aware, doesn't follow. I mean, this was like a big deal that they won. The Houston Astros won the World Series in 2017. And that season, they were uh, stealing signs and using camera technology, which is illegal. You can't do that in the record books. And they were caught doing that. Um, yeah. Sort yeah. of like, it's a weird thing because it's like, if you can get away with it, it's sort of like, then you can do it. But like, like well, wasn't I, it, wasn't it like an idea of like Bill Belichick, like having like people seeing from the other side of the stands on like, um, and he was doing, he was, like he was doing kind of a, sign language, but then um, everyone could see it. And then uh, he found out like what their plays were or something. He, so there, there was, um, and this, that's like a whole other thing where, um, the Patriots were recording games or I'm sorry, practices or something like that. And we better get, be, be careful if Mulkey is going to come on to the next one. <laughs> and there's, and then, yeah. Mulkey is a Patriots fan. So, but but so, hey, look, so listen, he listen, listen, I, I don't, I don't even want to get into that because that was like a whole other thing. And like trying to explain like what they did and what, you know, so, so, so the bottom line is like, and I'm not even going to get into like, you know, baseball terminology or whatever, but, the Houston Astros, I mean, no matter what, no matter how you look at it, they were caught cheating. Bottom line, whether you yeah. agree with right. it or not, yeah. I mean, it is straight up. They, you know, were yeah. caught going against them. Yeah. And it was a big deal. And it happened to be the year yeah. that they won the World Series in 2017. Sure. So there's a lot of backlash, of course. Now, the problem that I have, and, I, and I'm a big baseball fan, so I have a problem with the Houston Astros and what's going on right now. But the problem is, is not because – of the fact that they cheated it's the fact that they have no remorse for it and they're coming out and they're being like uh yeah okay i, I don't know i guess it was a big deal but it wasn't can we just like well who on? would actually come out to say that like who would actually they, do see, that see they the so their organization like i mean you know you remember like tom cruise how he was like had this great image before he fired his like pr person and then all of a sudden he's like jumping on oprah's couch and like him and Katie Holmes yeah. and this whole I mean, nonsense. That's that's a PR thing, man. That's like you got to get somebody on top of that to be like. So if you if you're yeah, crazy, Tom like Tom Cruise, Cruise never had to. Yeah, but Tom Cruise never had to apologize because he never did anything really wrong. No, but I mean, you know I mean? but I mean, so this is, I mean, again, I'm, I might be getting off track here, but my my point is that I think that Tom Cruise was squeaky clean because he had a great PR person, and then when he fired that PR person, all of a sudden he's just out there doing reckless shit like you know scientology scientology i'm jumping on oprah's couch i'm I'm crazy and then people are like whoa what yo what is the deal here bro <laughs> what are you doing and 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 it was like it was kind of shocking at the time because you're like this guy's kind of nuts but yeah, before that well, he had a pr person to keep him in check be like no nah, dude can't do that can't go on Oprah's well, show and start jumping on a couch telling saying how you're so in love with Katie Holmes. Like, uh, well, I mean, yeah, I, I, I think like that's an idea. I mean, sure. Like, I mean, a lot of celebrities obviously have publicists, PR people, lawyers, agents, managers. They're all just trying to make sure your image stays what it needs to be, right? Right. And there's an art form you're, to that. You're this, you're that, and that's what you need to be. But at the same time, 
sometimes people just go a little wild. So here's the thing. What I'm asking you, though, is, like, why is it that, like, okay, not that celeb celebrities probably need that, and maybe they will go off the rails, and obviously they've done that numerous times, but what about the Astros is a thing where they – I mean, I, I'm just trying they, to wonder, they, like, how did they not get a like they got away with it or they didn't? I don't, I don't know. So, like, if I like, let's just say, um, I caught you stealing. Like, I have video evidence of you reaching into someone's pocket, some old lady, and you're taking mm. money out of her pocket, and then you kind of, and then, and then it's like, well, how do you respond to that? And then you kind of go, oh, you know, whatever. I mean. It's not it's like she needs fake. the money. What? It's a deep fake. It's it's, it's Trump. <laughs> Trump yeah. says deep fake. Uh, you it's, you it's, you it's, plastered it's, my face on that thing where I said like nah. Do, like, do, do, do. <laughs> I mean oh, no. God. This is like this is not fake news. This is real news. Uh, yeah. But it's no but, no. So, so it like, is obviously. No, I mean it 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 it, it and this is and I'm bringing and I bring up the Astros because it's it's the same thing with Vanessa Hudgens, it's the same thing with Harvey Weinstein. It's it's the reason I have a problem with this and 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 to answer your question is the Astros never came out as an organization. Their owner is implicit in this as well. They were caught cheating. They yeah. never like they just did a I guess I'm sorry. They did like one of those kind of things. Like if I, yeah, like, and I, right. I was going to use the example, like let's say I caught you, Dave, take in, you know, a hundred dollars out of some old lady's pocket. And then you just kind of yeah. were like, yeah, I mean, I guess whatever. I mean, it wasn't like she was going to spend the money. I mean, she's dying soon anyway. I mean, I, I don't, can we just move my on? Like, and, and, and if that's your response. Yeah. And, and people do actually. And that's a funny thing. People would do that. Right. You, I mean, and you, and it wouldn't you know, be like, for that's me. I'd but, go to jail for like six years. But, um, but like, yeah, yeah, and you go, not. I can't believe that. But that's how, and, and I mean, it's a whole like, you know, sordid thing. I mean, basically the commissioner of baseball gave them immunity just to find the truth. And then once it was, it was sort of like, uh, what's his name in the shield? But isn't Michael it, Chiklis, isn't like he just gave of... up all his crimes. He was like, Hey, you can't throw me in jail. And then it was like, Oh my God, you're a fucking scumbag. <laughs> As know? someone that's edited bar mitzvahs with Michael Chiklis, he looks like the nicest man in the world. Every time I see him at a party, I, I believe that he was the commish. He was the commish. He was the commish. He was the commish before guy. he was. He in looks the... like every time like a camera goes in his face, he's not playing Vic Mackey. He's like actually like, hey, what's up? Like, hey, that's uh, why uh, I was. I was so. I was so. Bar mitzvah, bat mitzvah. I was so amazed with the shield because I was like, that's the commish, and he's a monster. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he was the nicest guy in the commission. But now let's, like, let's, oh let's, my God. let's bring this back. I think it's I know we're getting off topic here. too, dude. But I do think it's kind of interesting when you look at like, I mean, okay, it's a major organization. So when Patriots cheat, oh, the ball was not deflated like that. Oh, it was. No, it was. Oh, and when this they like, they no had no one wants they had better like PR that. though. They 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 uh Def deflated it or no deflected it sorry I, you you had me on the deflated <laughs> so well deflated they, they the, were the so Patriots much did the deflate at, balls or they something. were like here's what we need to do you need to do this you need to do this and then we're just gonna get this away and then you know that's what they the astros organization did not do that they basically were like uh y'all are making a mountain out of a molehill and people were like no we're not and then these players come out with this arrogant attitude, like we didn't do anything wrong, fuck you. And that's why people are mad because they're like, there's no punishment for these people and there's no remorse. And that's why people are mad. So, well, again, man, that's the kind of same thing with like the Patriots is sort of like a, uh, yeah, well, I guess we deflated a little bit and blah, blah, blah. Uh, and they were taping. And, and they were they were and, recording other people's games. Now, yeah. now, I, I, in in all fairness, what the Patriots were caught doing, you know, as a baseball fan, in my mind, I don't think is as bad as what the Astros were caught doing. So, well, I, I mean, whatever is bad is doing. It's sort of like any scandal in sports is also a tough. Like, it's a tough ring. Look at Louis C.K. in the comedy world in what he was doing. I wanted to fucking jerk off while a woman was just like there. Um, you, did you fuck her? N no. 
did you rape her? No, I, I, I just wanted her to come over. And that was weird. Uh, okay, you're Bill Cosby. You're Kevin Spacey. Go fucking out. You're done. Yeah, I mean, nobody you, likes you. you. Well, you yeah, what are done. you talking about? Like, this is, there's, this is, there's levels to this kind of thing. This I is think. a very slippery slope, and that's the thing. And it's like, now... I mean, and, you know, you throw uh, uh, sorry into that, too, and I, I get it, man. Like, there oh, is that. Yeah, that's, his whole thing. There is the whole thing. Are you this or are you that? And is there a gray area in between? And and that, I, I don't have an answer for you right now. I mean, I, I could tell you, though, that Harvey Weinstein is a scumbag, but when you were kind of oh, on yeah, that, like, I well, you're kind of weird and you're kind of creepy, but you're not really hurting anybody kind of thing. Like I guess maybe like uh like the Louis C.K. thing. Um, I mean, I, you know what I mean? It's like uh, yeah, Dude, I don't know. They came up to this room and he was like, "Hey, can I jerk off in front of you?" Because it gets me off. That's the kind of thing that I do. I just want to. I just want to jerk off in front of a woman, <laughs> and that's just, I'm just watching sort of me. Like that's very. That's it, it. Just I, I don't want to have sex with you. I don't actually want to touch you. I just want to like. It's, play it's with funny though because I'm, I'm hearing this. I'm like, oh yeah, of course. I guess you would, and then these celebrities, they would do that. <laughs> but that was like, the whole thing. That was. I like don't the, even. I don't even know how to process this shit anymore. I don't. You know? I don't know how to process that either. I mean, like, I mean, that. But that to me is like there's levels to this. There's Harvey Weinstein. There's Bill Cosby. America's fucking dad for 80s and 90s and yeah and now it was like you know and then you had a Hannibal Burris like start making jokes of like yeah he fucking raped people he drugged them he did things and then it all went like oh shit like now we can talk about it yeah. and then obviously with Weinstein you know I guess it was like Rose McGowan and uh Marissa Tomei and I don't remember exactly who else did um, like i oh. mean everybody comes out because everyone's scared to come out first and then right so and this is does. and this is the kind of thing so like listen like if you're one of those um um people that came out after the fact like i kind of like like somebody like gwyneth paltrow like who you know is on she won an oscar and she's like thank you harvey i love you blah, blah, blah. and then she comes out and says she's like you know she was harassed and it's like now I'm not discrediting her in that what she dealt with with Harvey because, like I said, the guy's a scumbag. But somebody like um, what's her name, Annabella Sciarra, uh, I'm butchering her name. Annabella, Sh yeah, Sh she. Sciarra. I think yeah. she was kind of somebody who like went like went on a limb, like, hey, I got to do what's right for me, you know? Maybe, yeah. But right. somebody like that who's like, I'm going to sacrifice my career to do what's right, like that is like heroic. What Gwyneth Paltrow did. Oh, oh yeah, yeah he, sure. he he raped me too. Like you know come on like you you had your chance you should have done something I'm not, I'm not saying like you know what i mean i'm not saying like she got what she deserved or she deserved it i'm not saying anything like that this is the thing this is the culture we're in now it's like anything i say i'm like oh my god i'm gonna offend somebody but it's like but that's the bottom line it's like well, you are going to offend somebody. We're yeah, we, like, we've we've like, probably it, offended like seventy five people. If they if if we even have seventy five people listening, but to this, but I mean, if we have seventy, we should, we should have thousands but the, of people but the, listening the, to this. If if Gwyneth Paltrow was sexually assaulted, or raped, or whatever, back at that time, she should have said something. And if she didn't feel like she should say something, she should have been in a system that allowed her to say something. And I hope, and hopefully right, nowadays sure. we have that system in place. And, you know, I mean, hey, maybe you were scared back then and I get it, but like, that, you know what I mean? Like, that's where we need to get to, not let's, you know, throw Harvey Weinstein in prison. Let's get this situation right where that shit doesn't happen, where that guy doesn't, I, I that kind of behavior like, doesn't yeah. exist, you know? No, um, dude, totally. And I think like it's, it's, it's actually, I mean, yeah, it, it, it had been happening since the fucking, tw like, this kind of thing, women in the industry, women in any industry was always a pat you on the butt, do whatever I want, Mad Men style, uh, do this, do that, do whatever, for sure. And that's yeah. been in every industry. It's not just filmmaking. It's not just that. But the thing I is, mean, and I, I, you want to climb the ladder in my financial like market or, or my uh, like thing. 
you look pretty good, honey. Like, come on up. But you know what? But I do, I do want to make a turn. I do want to make a point to say that you and I have always been like, you know, a plus as far as like the more, the morality of things. Like we always kept, whether it was stuff that we worked on together or your movie or my movie, we kept, you know, safe sets where people, you know, weren't going to get hurt. Try, you try, you um, try to do your best. Yeah, you, <laughs> exactly. Sometimes it doesn't work. You know, but, I mean, you know, we, we do work. I best. mean, not about sexual like issues. Like I've never had any like kind of thing. Where, I mean, you know, know there like, was that oh, one time when the light fell and killed the dude, but I mean, you know, no, I'm kidding. Uh, that didn't happen. Jesus Christ. <laughs> I mean, I thought we were going to have a safe podcast here. Listen, my, my, my point is. Nobody's that- dead. Nobody, no, no, there dead. Was, nobody's dead nobody got hurt out of, but dave and me have run very good crews where uh we, we've had issues we've had issues but it's know, not, but, never been say, like we, to that we, thing but it's, but and it's actually been we've had more women and, and everything like that you know so. but here's the thing we've actually had more women on our sets i think like i mean somewhat to the effect of like where most sets might be like 85 75 or 90 yeah. a lot of dudes i've had more women on my set and you also like i mean grip yeah staffers, listen, i mean listen, camera yeah, operators, no, of course like, yeah you're, you're you're like trying I'll, to make it like, and, and, and i'm not and i'm not saying oh you know what's your diversity level or whatever on this i'm just saying that it's like if you run if you do things the right way and just be a human being and just be like respectful of people and and you and i like I mean, when this shit was going on, like the casting couch and stuff, that was a real thing. You know, let's say the early 2000s when you and I were first making movies and people yeah, were that's making- That's been going you know, on for 70s, 70, 70, 60s. I mean, I, like yeah, 70s. I mean, right. But I mean, yeah. we, weren't, we weren't alive back then. You well, know? yeah, but- But it's like when yeah. people would joke, I mean, because I got those jokes too when I first started, you know, I was like, all right, I think I movie making. I think that's my thing. That's what I'm going to do. And then people are like, oh, you're going to, you know, use that casting couch. And I would get these jokes and stuff. And I'm like, no, because I'm not a fucking scumbag. And I'm like, yeah, I, right. Yeah. Like, and, sure. and, and, yeah. you know, if I'm hiring an actress, I'm hiring her for her abilities, not because I want to sleep with her. It's like, Jesus Christ. Like, I, you know, and, it, and, and, and so it, it's just always bugged me. It's bugged me. For well, that's whole, always, like, that, that happened to me in college too. And, and, you know, we're, we're a vintage age of some things and it was just like, Oh, move, like I, maybe it was Fairfax, Virginia. Or maybe it was just Virginia in itself. Maybe it was East coast or, or something like that, where, you know, if we were at USC or we were at UCLA in 1998, 99, 2000, nobody would have said that. But every time I got like, yeah, I want to make movies for a living. I, I, I want to be a film director. I want to write movies, make movies, blah, blah, blah. And yeah, even people that I still love to this day and still talk to or like want to, would hang out with if I saw them. Uh, you're going to do porn? You you're probably gonna do porn, right? We, uh, we, like, we, we uh, get that all. No, the time. that wasn't my plan. Like, I don't want to do porn. Sorry. Listen, so I want. I just want to say this one thing. Just kind of close the loop on this whole kind of episode and speak my piece on the whole thing. Yeah. So I think the theme here is like if you have Vanessa Hudgens or the Astros, and I was gonna say the Astros is it's just been a debacle the way they've handled it because there's like no remorse. They're doing fake apologies. They know they cheated. Everyone's pissed at them. It's like, and they got away with it, you know, like the players did. And then yeah. you got Harvey Weinstein, yeah. who like doesn't understand why he's going to jail because he raped a bunch of women. And it's just like, and this is the kind of shit it's, and it's not necessarily like these, these Hollywood celebrities are out of touch. It's just, there's no accountability. Like if you fuck up, like own up to it, be like, be, be a good person and be like, yeah, I'm sorry. I made a mistake. If you rape somebody or you drugged women or you made a bad comment or you cheated or whatever, like, I'm not saying that you'd be forgiven. I'm just saying, don't sit there and go, oh, I'm not big a deal. I don't know what I did wrong. That's bullshit, you know? No. Well, yeah. It's just, it. this is the kind of hypocrisy of not just Hollywood, but just the world. It's like, what, what are we doing here? We're, we're. We're we, making we live in also in a time but, when a president can also and yeah sorry yeah if you if you don't like what I say in this podcast about our president Mr. Donald J. Stupid ass Trump 
you can not listen. Uh, uh, that's fine. I don't think that's. But at the same name, time, but, come on, yeah. this is the the world we're living in, where everything he everything that he says, uh, two weeks later, when people like try to say, "Hey, when you said that, I never said that. We literally have you on tape saying that. I didn't say that." That's fake news. Nope, fake news. Nope, didn't say it. No, you did, dude. Come on, stop. That's but Dave, the, like, the, the reality is, is you're, you're trying to rationalize something that cannot, I mean, it, it, the people that support. Well, from, I look at like a Harvey Weinstein just exactly like I look at a, a Donald Trump. If Harvey Weinstein is looking at his lawyer like, uh, what's going on? I don't, I don't know how. Oh, like, no. I, the narcissistic. Uh, egotistical. Yeah. The, I get what that. I get what you're saying. Yeah. It's the same. It's the same mentality that Trump and Harvey Weinstein are. You know, can sit there and be like, I can do no wrong, and I'm, you know, uh, I'm Teflon. Like you can't, you can't touch me. Uh, well, apparently they they for both they touched Weinstein, but for whatever reason they can't touch Trump because he gets away with whatever the hell he wants to. But and yeah, let's we you know kind of stirred the stirred the the pot a little stirred bit. The pot. Maybe. Yeah, yeah so, exactly. Um, All right, guys, thanks so much for listening to the Six Eleven Films podcast with David what, Groves and Neil McKay. Yeah, what are we doing next um, time? Are we doing? We're talking about our first feature, Eleven. Who knows? Doing? Like it, it might go, get all jumbled up anyway. <laughs> who knows? <laughs> Maybe we'll have a special. Let's guest just have fun with it. Yeah, that's cool. But um, yeah, with whatever you said, ditto. Goodbye and yeah. <laughs> <laughs> rock and roll. <laughs>